Praise the sun, and welcome to my series ranking every boss in Souls Born Kiro Ring. Souls Kiro Ring Born. Soul. Uh, whatever, just. Welcome to my series ranking every boss in these games. You might see a notable lack of Demon Souls, and that's because I haven't played the game yet. Didn't own a PS3 back in the day, and the ever-elusive PS5 has managed to delay my exposure to the first game in my favorite series of games of all time. I'm also not including the Chalice bosses in Bloodborne or the inner bosses of Sekiro, because I haven't faced all of these. This is going to be a long series, so be sure to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any of the uploads. Keep in mind, this list is subjective and our experiences with quality can all vary greatly. I don't have an objective quantifier for placing these bosses on this list. I might consider runback, lore, music, difficulty, visual design, mechanical design, atmosphere, voice acting, arena, and more in the calculations, but I don't have an official formula or rating system. I'm just placing these where I see them belonging. As far as I've counted, there are going to be 162 entries in this list. Be sure to let me know your least favorite bosses of the series down below, and let's get started with the 10th worst Souls boss of all time, according to me, the most objective metric. Number 10, Rom the Vacuous Spider. As much as I love Bloodborne, as evidenced by my Hunter's Mark tattoo and top placement in my video ranking the games of the series, I can't deny that there are some minor gripes I have with the game. One of those gripes comes from the potato with legs that lands itself at number 10 of all time. After finally reaching Bergenworth, you dive through this celestial pool and land in a new realm. You walk on water gracefully as you glide towards a cosmic abomination in the form of Rom. The first time I played through Bloodborne, I absolutely decimated him. I turned this potato baked in a minute or two, and I had fun doing it. The visual flair of the arena and the strangeness of the design and attack struck me as oddly alluring. Then I faced Rom on a lower level account. Screw these dumb spider mobs. They have armored heads, as does Rom, meaning you can't just hack away at them. Every time Rom moves, which is often, they all respawn, meaning the best option is to not really take them out, but kind of run around randomly avoiding them. The insane amounts of damage they dish out means that they will likely kill you in just a couple hits, and this is all without Rom's erratic nature coming into consideration. So let me get this straight, you have many armored respawning spiders surrounding a boss that teleports regularly. Well that doesn't sound fun, well maybe the boss itself is well designed. No, not really. So what are we looking for here? I genuinely despise the gameplay of this fight, the damage of the randomly added respawning enemies, their tanky nature, and all of the main boss's attacks. So is there anything to enjoy? Well, yeah. I'm gonna say something positive about almost every boss in this list. Partially just to even out with some of the negativity, but also because even in From's worst bosses, there are some redeemable qualities. The lore implications of Rom are intriguing, the arena design is splendid, and I enjoy the boss entrance. Some of the attacks look visually appealing, and I could see the enjoyment in this at a higher level. All around though, I have to say, this is one boss fight I generally dread reaching. Number 9, Lude and Zalin, The King's Pets When discussing boss rankings, it's impossible to dissociate some external components from the fight itself. A good example of this is a boss run-up. If every time you die to a boss, you are required to traverse a long and challenging path in order to reface the boss, it essentially becomes part of the boss fight. Despite not being inside the boss arena itself, the runback is inextricably tied to the boss experience. And although this fight itself is not inherently horrible, it is a gank reskin that breaks your weapon following the frigid outskirts. I can't imagine what From was think- Actually, I can. It's been posited that these sections are co-op sections, and are meant to be achieved with friends. Well, what if I don't have friends, FromSoft? You gonna kick me while I'm down? It shouldn't be absolutely miserable and unenjoyable in every single way, just because I decide to play a single player game on my own. Every time the snow blows over and we get a Sahara Desert Sandstorm level of vision reduction, I just imagine I'm one of the kids in Krampus, and I've been a bad boy. Coal isn't the only thing I'm getting for Christmas, because apparently FromSoft has decided for a reindeer to head straight up my butt. Thankfully, the design of the king's pets is visually appealing, and the gameplay is generally enjoyable, but running back through that hellscape is not something I will ever be doing again. To top it all off, they reskin a pretty cool boss from earlier in that same DLC with Ava. They cause your equipment to break, they gank you, and they heal. You know how people have been saying Elden Ring is like a victory lap of all of the best FromSoft has to offer? This fight is like a loser lap of everything that they've ever gotten wrong. Thankfully, it's optional. Number 8, Belfry Gargoyles. Alright, you might have realized there's going to be a hefty helping of Dark Souls 2 poop on your plate for this video. Don't get me wrong, I love Dark Souls 2, and it has some of the best fights of the series. 
However, I can't help but be pissed off when they make simply worse versions of great fights in the series, and when they do massive gank fights for literally no reason. When I first saw this rehash of the Superior Dark Souls 1 fight, I was actually looking forward to it. This was a visually enticing battle on a rooftop with some stellar music, but then there was another gargoyle. And another. And another. And another. And in a stop already! This fight sucks to engage in because it's pure chaos and no order. If this fight was limited to the two from the original, or maybe even three, I could have seen it as a mediocre rehash. However, with how this fight played out, I can't put it any higher than this. And while I'm complaining, why does it feel like I'm hitting these bosses with a paperclip? Like, what is this audio design? Where's the weight to the combat? Oh, I found it. They left it in Dark Souls 1. This had me confused for the longest time. I was like, why does it feel like nothing is happening in some of the Dark Souls 2 fights? And now I know, and I can never go back. I'm not sure why they did this with the audio design, but I'm glad it was reverted in future installments. It takes away from the weight of all my attacks, and I hate that. Number 7, The Ancient Wyvern. Hey, The Ancient Wyvern sucks. This is one that's kind of hard to actually place, because, well, it's not really a fight. I'm gonna be honest, I actually don't hate the idea of this fight as much as some other people do. That was clearly meant to be more of an environmental hazard than anything else. It's kind of like a way worse version of the snake from Sekiro. However, the problem for me at least, as somebody who is more forgiving of this fight, is the fact that the one mechanic, the one thing that this fight has going for it, the plunging attack of doom. It's time to die! Dragon. It just doesn't work randomly sometimes. I have clipped through this dragon's head at least five times in this fight, and that's just not acceptable in a fight that has one real mechanic. It's the one thing they had to get right, and it's just not reliable. If that were fixed, I doubt this boss would be in the top 10 worst in my book. I don't really judge it the same way I judge other bosses, but with that major of a flaw and an already underwhelming battle, I can't really say it's any better than the 7th worst in Soulsborne. Another huge plus though is that it has a quite stunning backdrop with Arch Dragon Peak. Clear blue skies are foreign to Soulsborne encounters, and with that crumbling grey stone and white dragon jump scare combined, all are quite dazzling parts of a fight. Okay, fight is a loose term, but hey, at least they tried something. Number 6, Godskin Duo. The footage you're seeing now is from my NG Plus experience, but everything stands for my first experience. This fight takes me to the worst fights of Dark Souls 2, with additional annoyance. It reminds me of Dragon Riders, a boss that I despise, but it has somehow less thought. How do you have less thought than Dragon Riders, one of the worst bosses of a lower quality Souls game? It's known for the horrible gank fights, and this one is worse. How? In Dragon Riders, you can at least separate the aggro, kind of. Sure, they have the same speed, but one is an archer, and one is not an archer boy. This means that you could kill the main guy first, and then the low health archer will drop. Or, you can have the main dude destroy the archer boy's pillar and kill him after because he has lower HP. The logic of this fight is two fast enemies with huge damage stacked in a room with destroyable pillars. Both have long-ranged programmed AI to throw black flame firebombs at you when you heal, and both have the ability to close gaps in an instant. I'm going to take this opportunity to mention summons real quickly. I receive many comments a day about how bosses in Elden Ring are so easy because of spirit summons, and because they're a part of the game, you should use them. Well, spirit summons are cool, and I'm glad that they're there for people who want to play the game that way. But I just don't. I like to learn the mechanics of a fight, and of a boss, and overcome the challenge. I've watched people not learn a single attack of a main story boss like Melania because they go Rivers of Blood Mimic plus 10 and spam the weapon arts on her until the fight is over. I love learning the moves and studying the opponents overcoming the challenge. The problem here is that I've already studied and learned the attacks of these opponents. We fought them already on their own, and they're relatively challenging. I was hoping there would be slight adjustments to their AI, but it appears like these are literally just the same bosses we faced with a new summon mechanic. And why is it like 3.5 kills before they die? Like why isn't it just kill both at once, or kill both of them once, or kill three? Why is it like 3.5? That just feels kind of sloppy and thrown together. Just like the worst bosses of the series, except for this one does the cardinal sin of not only being bad, but also difficult, so it can't end quickly. If you couldn't tell, I'm not a fan. At least there are spirit summons which you could use on this fight, and the enemies individually are a lot of fun. I did this with my cousin and we both took aggro individually on my rune level 1 run, and that was pretty enjoyable. Two one-on-ones. That's about all I can say for this one though. Next. Number 5. Prowling Magus and Congregation. 
As a stark contrast to the difficulty of the previous entry, Prowling Magus and Congregation managed to be much worse than Pinwheel. Not only is it a group of random mobs thrown together in a lame arena, it's placed far enough in the game that it would be past what I would call the early game. Why is it even necessary to have a health bar at the bottom of the screen, and boss music for a random room of enemies? This would be like if they put a boss health bar on the first street of Bloodborne with boss music and titled it Street Dwellers, except this is way worse because the combat actually kind of sucks here. The enemies are boring, the fight is easy as hell, and it's overall just kind of forgettable and a boring experience. It kind of reminds me of the Ancient Wyvern, which is not really a comparison you'd likely think of, but hear me out. It's not really a boss per se, but they decided to qualify it as one inexplicably. It surprises you as you stumble upon it. It's kind of a forgettable encounter in the end. Okay, so that's all true, then why is this one much worse? Well, compare the look of this with this. Let's do a little trivia real quickly. What is the best thing about the Souls games? A. Overly spammed enemies. B. Status effects like toxic. C. Bad hitboxes. Or D. Recycled content and stale ideas. Well, if you guessed any of these, you're covered with the next boss on our list. Number four, Royal Rat Authority. Oh man, I can't believe this one is not the worst. What an absolutely trash tier design. To be fair, 90% of my hatred here is for the toxic rats. Rats and dogs have always been the worst in Souls games, and toxic rats take that to a new level. And for some stupid reason, there are four of them. Why? They aggro onto you with some corny AI, and the janky hitboxes of DS2 make it difficult to hit them sometimes. Get hit by them twice, you're dead. Toxic does an unbearable amount of damage. Why couldn't it have just been poison? And then the rat dog fight is actually not too horrible. Sure, it's kind of generic and kind of boring, but nothing too bad. The arena is somewhat cool looking, and it's good that the rat waits a second before jumping you. Another saving grace of this fight is the grace point. I mean, bonfire. It's placed right outside the arena of this optional trash monkey, so thankfully re-attempts are super easy. Honestly, if the toxic rats were gone, this wouldn't be so bad, but since they are here, I'll leave this in dumpster tier. Before we get to my top three, be sure to hit that like button as it helps me out a lot. Thank you. Number three, Mikalash, host of the nightmare. The nightmare areas of Bloodborne are hell to traverse, but I mean that as a compliment. You never know what's coming next, and the warped visual design complements the cognitive confusion brewing in your hunter's mind. As you step into the arena with Mikalash, he taunts you and runs, sending you in a wild chase of confusion and mockery. On paper, it doesn't sound too bad. Unfortunately, this fight hits all of the wrong notes. Multiple spammed enemies for no discernible reason? Check. Long fight with very minimal mechanics? Check. The ability to one-shot you for no reason? Check. Long and arduous run back to ensure any deaths are even more obnoxious? Check, check, check. Even if you know where to go, hurting Mikalash is not a fun task, and his voice lines begin to grate on you over time. Sure, this may fit thematically, but I just want to fight the boss, and instead I'm hurting children like I'm in an Overwatch competitive lobby. The one-shot potential of a call beyond absolutely solidified this in the worst of the worst. Thankfully the voice acting is on point, although the lines become infuriating beyond a point. It's too bad this panned out so horribly. It could have been so much more. Number two, Afflicted Grave Robber. And yeah, I'm not reading all this. Okay, so let me take a moment to reflect on this list. Every single boss on this list has more than one enemy in the arena with you. This one makes it even worse than two, with three. Okay, maybe I went too far. Just kidding. Have you tried Estus Juice? It'll quench ya. That's all. Back to the programming. Hey guys, I'm back from my mandated anger management classes after trying to record this video. Alright, where were we? The run back to this boss must have been designed by Satan himself. Who could excuse this? And the boss itself is a reskin of NPCs. How? How was this allowed to be placed in a DLC that people paid money for? I would have paid to not play this fight. The arena is designed somewhat competently, allowing for the splitting of aggro, but the water on the bottom slows you down when you're trying to run through it. Not the enemies though, of course. And they added petrifying statues down there just for fun, woohoo! This is all assuming you don't die from Satan's gauntlet from earlier. I just hate this fight and everything about it. I didn't even beat it on my last playthrough because I could not stand to do it again. But we all know that there's one fight that's even worse. Number one. Bed of Chaos. Alright, let's actually start with the positives. I love the cutscenes that play during this fight. I love the visual design of the boss. Not the loser fly in the back, but the magical flaming tree tendrils. 
I like that it saves your progress as well. And I like the slide down at the beginning, but literally everything else is horrible. I'm not going to be saying anything you haven't heard before here, with the boss being nearly impossible to track while you try to navigate your newfound platforming Dark Souls experience. What an absolute disaster of a decision. I wonder if the developers had the time to flesh out this experience, how different the Bed of Chaos would have looked, if they had extra time to complete the second half of the game and the whole Lost Eyes of the section. If the floor dropping out was removed, this fight wouldn't be so bad. If the run back wasn't so long, this fight wouldn't be so bad. If you could see what the boss was doing, it wouldn't be so bad. But it does all of this. Oh, and you can die after you get into the bug spot. Why? Why did anyone think that was necessary? Anyways, this nightmare of an experience is finally in the rearview mirror. Next, we're onto some mediocre bosses because I think that we've covered almost every boss that I hate in the series. I'm still sorting out how many bosses I want to put in each video, so I guess we'll see when I come out with the next video, but thanks for watching and I hope you all have a great day. Peace!